Hello and welcome to the chat, back to the channel, and welcome to another reaction video here today, bringing to be another episode of Doctor Who, as we jump into Season 4 today. Last time, if you haven't checked it, go check it out. Big things happened, obviously, in the Season 3 finale of Doctor Who, and now we're in Season 4, David Tennant's last season, and I have really enjoyed David Tennant, I really have. I love Eccleston, I've really loved David Tennant, I don't know, he just adds this extra bit of charm and goofiness. And I love it very much. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get into its final season. I am. Uh, since last time, I did watch one episode off camera. Le Christmas Special. The Voyage of the Damned. And so, time for a little catch up. Everyone's favourite portion of these episodes. Let's see how long this one takes me. Uh, uh, um. So, the Titanic that the Doctor crashed into in the finale of last season was actually a space Titanic. Yep. Taking a Christmas flight over Earth at Christmas. Shocking, I know. Uh, the information robot angels were malfunctioning. The Doctor Who and Doctor and Doctor Who has very much taught me not to trust any form of angels after Blink. God, I'm confusing myself. The Doctor met waitress Astrid Piff, who dreamed of travelling to the stars. The Doctor just loves people like that. They travel down to Earth and see London deserted on Xmas Eve, alerting Doki's worries, of course, but fair enough after the last two Xmas goings on. The Captain of Titanic turned off the shields for some asteroids to kill them all. Fun. The cult of robot angels used their halos as ninja stars. Fun. Uh, Doctor asked Astrid to come with him on the TARDIS. She sealed it with a kiss. God, he has a thing for blondes, doesn't he? Kylie Minogue. She was Kylie Minogue. Didn't realise that. So I looked it up after. The CEO of the Titanic's company turned out behind it all, trying to get back on the board to oust him, when Astrid sacrificed herself to stop him once and for all, which I'm pretty sure is a new world record from Companion to Death. Not the best record. Doctor stopped the Titanic from crashing into the Earth. Thank God he tried to bring Astrid back, but couldn't, so send her atoms to the stars forever. Which was quite lovely. Uh, before turning down a lovely old man's companion offer and leaving him on Earth with a million pounds, I'm sure that nothing can go wrong there. That was the Voyage of the Damned. I enjoyed it. I think it might have been... I... God. I don't know where I rank it on Christmas specials. Season 2's with Donna, I think, is my favourite. I don't know if this is above or below the David Tennant's first one. Um, I don't know. But I did enjoy it. It was alright. You know, it was fine. Uh, and yeah, well, if I would do, let's just jump right into things, because I'm excited to get into Season 4, the final season with David Tennant of Doctor Who. So, ladies and gentlemen, Season 4, Episode 1, Partners in Crime. Ah, <laughs> it's lovely to see Donna back. And Donna, I mean, at this point, getting what I can only call the official... As far as I see it, companion introduction, which is just footage of them walking down a street <laughs> before they bump into the doctor. Uh, as they make both make very different way enter enters into the building. I do love Donna. I do. Um and I I am excited for her as a companion because she just brings a different vibe, you know. Rose and Martha were both different, but at the same time they both have a different vibe with the doctor where they loved him. Doctor and Martha are just kind of bestie vibes to me, and I I just, I just love that different dynamic. Adipose Industries. 21st century way to lose weight. No exercise, no diet. You just take one capsule. The fat just walks away. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I really don't trust anything, so what? You do just put, does, does the fat become sentient? Does the fat come to life? Is someone trying to build an army out of fat? <laughs> What's going on here? Bound to a large molecule. How many people have taken the pill? One million customers in the Greater London area. From next week, we start rolling out nationwide. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we're going to stop that, but we don't here for a reason, for Christ's sake, having a watch. Don is also here for a reason, having a watch. Uh, maybe part of her job, who knows what Don is up to. Um, but yeah, we, we got to stop this for the nationwide roll. I, I can pretty much assure you of that at the least. Special price of forty-five pounds. Packing days, registered post. Special free gift. Any post industries pendant. Made of eighteen karat gold. Are the Doctor and Martha working together, or are they just doing the exact same thing? Because honestly, it could go the same way. Okay, maybe they're just doing the same thing, and this is the moment that they're finally both like, you know what? Let's give this a try, huh? <laughs> Let's pop off, bestie. need a list of your customers. Could you print it on? Where's the printer? By the plant. That plant? Yeah, that's the one. Lovely. That's the printer there. By the plant, yeah. Brilliant. Does it need a code? No. Has it got paper? 
they're so cute. <laughs> they're so cute. I don't. I, I'm pretty sure they're not working together. They're working independently on the exact same thing, and they're just so cute doing it it's such a synchro like this. Thanks then. Thanks then. Oh, what's that? My telephone number. Oh. Health and safety. You be health. I'll be safety. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Oh my god, it's like they're in a bloody rom-com where they just keep missing each other, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I respect it, you know, the Doctor does have this, I was about to say this charm, but I guess it's, he, the Doctor does have this thing where he looks like David Tennant, and that's just irresistible to a lot of people, if we're all honest with ourselves. <laughs> Two weeks now, lost 14 kilos. Same amount every day. One kilo, you wake up, disappeared overnight. Technically speaking, it's gone by ten past one in the morning. What makes you say that? That's when I get woken up. Oh, that's not suspicious, is it? <laughs> you lose exactly one pound a day and you lose it at the exact same time, ten past one exactly every morning. When he gets woken up by it as well. Suspicious. <laughs> ten minutes past one, every night, the burglar alarm goes off. I've had experts in, had it replaced. No burglar. Nothing. Even up looking. Have you got a cat flap here when I bought the house? <laughs> ten past one every morning, the burglar alarm goes off. He's got a cap flap, so at 10 past one every morning, I can only assume happening is, much like the woman said, the fat just walks away <laughs> through the cat flap off to whatever centralised location they are storing all this, this moving fat. <laughs> we have on schedule parthenogenesis. Okay. <laughs> Martha twiddling around with the with the locket she took earlier that you get free with every order, every first order, um, and that really gets that woman's stomach going. And I'm gonna say, could be wrong. I'm not an expert, obviously. It doesn't look um, healthy or normal. <laughs> what's, what's going on there? The adipose has been witnessed. Activating full genesis. Oh, <laughs> who knew? <laughs> The creature is literally just, you know, a pound of fat, you know. Could be so cute. Oh, you lose weight and you get cute little buddies. <laughs> Not good, though, obviously, because this boss lady uh, said it's been witnessed and she's activating full poscogenesis, which I I just assume means this, this, this woman's about to lose a lot more than one pound of fat today. <laughs> what are you? Facing? <laughs> Everything all right in there? Do you mind if I pop to the loo? Help me! What's wrong? Oh my god. Yeah, full party of the genesis. <laughs> Just completely evaporating into these little... New... God, they're... Why are they so cute? These little <laughs> fat creatures, shall we say. Um, I mean, on one hand we've got the Doctor rushing to us, which, you know, lovely reunion. On the other hand, we do have... The Astiopo boys in the van coming round <laughs> to collect them, so you know. Should probably do any investigating we're gonna do real quickly, guys. <laughs> oh, I'm just jumping out of the window. <laughs> They're so cute. Why they gotta be so damn cute? <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Damn. Um, gone. <laughs> yeah, she is gone, isn't she? Van's got away. I mean, we know it's Astiopo, at the very least. We know it's the two of them, so we know where to go ahead. Uh, we've seen Donna seen little fat creatures. I thought Donna was going to in the cab, and then she was going to see the Doctor while she was in it. We're going to get, like, a little throwback to um, the Christmas special where they first met, you know, uh, especially around the cab. <laughs> the Doctor chasing her. While well, she was in a cab and he was in a TARDIS, <laughs> but hey, on foot's fine as well, guys. It seems we have a case of industrial espionage. One touch and the capsule biogen to its owner, but someone wants to have introduced a second raw capsule. There, there she is. What should we do with her? I don't know. <laughs> By the sound of it, they've seen Donna. They're being very, she'd be very vague, so it might not be Donna. Yeah, it might be the pretty girl who hid on David Tennant's doctor, but I'm assuming it's Donna. And you know, Donna in trouble. The doctor's senses will really kick in then. And what time's this? How old am I? Not old enough to use a phone. Look at you. You're never gonna find a flat. No good sitting there. Do something. Oh. 
Yeah, I think Donna very much ready to head out on an adventure, and I mean, at the very least, get the hell away from this out of this house. <laughs> Start doing something, having some experiences. You know, she wanted to go and explore the earth. She said a Christmas special when she turned down the doctor's offer. And I think now she's ready to just get the hell out of here. <laughs> No one's going to come along with a magic wand and make your life all better. Where's Grandad? Up the hill. He's always up the hill. Permission to board ships, huh? Permission granted. I mean, first of all, very funny, you know, no one's going to come along with a magic wand and just make everything better. It's not a wand, okay, and it's not magic. It's a sonic and it's a screwdriver. Thank you very much. <laughs> and secondly, I recognise this guy. <laughs> I did probably just watch the episode. He's the, he was in the Yarlands. He was in the Christmas special. He was on the newsstand. He was like, oh, there's not going to be aliens for a third Christmas. And then he was very bemused when there were almost aliens for a third Christmas. But they did, well, you know, they didn't crash into London. So it's, it was a positive in the end, at the very least. How far away is that? 26 million miles. But we'll get there. Julian about with all them aliens. You really believe in all that stuff, don't you? If I wait here long enough. I suppose you've seen a little blue box. Is that slang for something? <laughs> oh, Donna's, uh, Donna's granddad also has that itch to explore the stars. You know, the makings of a doctor's companion. <laughs> I mean, that's the base quality you need, you know. Do you, do you want to go see the stars? All right, then. Get in the TARDIS. <laughs> Donna's starting to miss it, you know. Probably wishing she took the doctor up on his offer, but, um... Oh, you know, you, you two seem... <laughs> your rom, your rom-com meet cute approaching at the very least. You keep just missing each other. You, you get there eventually. <laughs> seem to be drifting. I'm not drifting. I'm waiting. What for? The right man. Same old story. I don't mean like that. But he's real. I let him fly. Go and find him. I've tried. It's not like you to give up. No. <laughs> yeah, don't give up, Donna. You'll find him. You'll find him. He won't fly away this time without you at the very least. You can fly away together. <laughs> Maybe bring Grams with you for a trip, hey? <laughs> That's amazing. Seems to be a bioflip digital stitch specifically for... Oh, yeah, he can say he, he he wants to be alone or whatever, but accepting that maybe, you know, well, yeah, the Doctor and his companion, always coming back to that bloody quote, it's just great. Um, He's just, he's lonely. He doesn't want to be lonely. He wants someone who can, I mean, explain stuff to and, you know, <laughs> be his brilliant self around and, you know, spend time with. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. <laughs> Literally, constantly just missing each other. This is the most wrong stuff I've ever seen. <laughs> also, I love um. Doctor's got his blue box. Donna's got her blue car. It's just a small thing, but I do like. <laughs> Morning. See you tomorrow. Oh my god. <laughs> Both of them waiting all day. Donna waiting in the toilets. Doctor waiting in a janitor's closet. So they can both roam the facility uninterrupted at night to see what's trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> you are the same, okay? For the love of God, just just meet each other, meet up again. And it's like, oh, you know what? We have quite a lot in common. I could jump aboard the, the TARDIS, ah? Come on. <laughs> I need the car. Why are you whispering? I'm in church. We know you're in here, so why don't you make this nice and easy and show yourself? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? The evil boss here. I guess I didn't expect anything less, but <laughs> being so directly evil, just barge into the toilet with two men holding absolute was holding SMGs, machine guns. <laughs> I guess you know what, you know, just very direct, you know. There's no veiled threat, just a very concise, clear threat. <laughs> we'll do it the hard way. There you are. I've been through the records. All of your results have been faked. Yep. Yeah, per. Was she the one who was flirting with, Doctor, with David Tennant? If so, I got it. If not, no, she's the one who was at the start, the journalist, isn't she? So I think they are different people. But I, I, I wasn't Donna. Okay. <laughs> they really said it so vaguely when she was looking at the screen about who it was. It wasn't Donna. So Donna, you're safe, but um, I, you're about to hear what happens to those who interfere in the business, at least. <laughs> Those pills. Oh, is the spark of life. Binds the fat together and galvanizes it. Form a body. My name. Foster. As in foster mother. These are my children. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> foster is in foster mother. Okay. 
fair, you know. You've, you've fostered a lot of little little baby fats. <laughs> it, it, put, it puts baby fat into a whole different meaning over here. <laughs> Doctor and Donna also just eavesdropping across from each other pretty much. Oh, my God, you two, just <laughs> stop just crossing paths, okay? Bump into each other, please. It's called an adipose. It's from all you. <laughs> they finally see each other window to window whilst this woman's being tortured in there and is this close to death <laughs> just stare each other in shock Dr. Bemuse, Donna jaw dropped <laughs> I love the, the doctors uh, you know, kind of tone down Donna? <laughs> and then Marva, you can just feel her screaming internally Doctor! <laughs> I love them. <laughs> I love them, boy. <laughs> They're just ignoring this this woman's monologue, Mr. F Mrs. Foster's entire monologue she's doing. She's doing her evil villain monologue, and we're over here. <laughs> Donna's saying, it's me. Doc's like, well, I can see that. <laughs> She's having a great time. Doug's just wondering, what the hell are you doing here? Okay, he doesn't want to... This is clearly a dangerous alien situation. He doesn't want her in trouble. <laughs> she doesn't care. She She's just thrown her side now. She's just happy to see you, Doc. She's been waiting. We're interrupting you. <laughs> I got away from my daughter a little bit. She's going to get this entire speech. Dog just across like, yeah, okay, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, don't even know if these people have stopped talking. You are entrapped in them, actually. If you could just leave the room so they could open the door and the window and have a proper chat, please. <laughs> I love this. Get her. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Good idea, Doc. Run. Sonic screwdrivers the door locks so they can't chase Donna. Sonic screwdrivers away. Go to the roof. Let's meet up. Oh, <laughs> it's like old times running away from our near death situation. Oh, <laughs> uh, I love like I love the um. Like another juxtaposition, I don't know what's the word for it, um, mirror, I guess, of in the Christmas special, um, all showing all of Donna's, you know, co meetings and conversations with Lance on the stairwell, and then her and Doctor meet again on the stairwell, you know, because all those memories of Lance on the stairwell kind of taint in, so I'm glad she has a nice little stairway memory now with the Doctor. How'd you find the Doctor? I thought we traveled and then he'll turn up, he looked everywhere. That's all about the bees disappearing. All those amazing things. Yeah, no, I believe them all. Apart from that replica of the Titanic fly over the palace on Christmas Day, I mean, that's what I'll be The bees disappear. That's what it says on the internet. Okay, don't you're getting too deep in the internet and conspiracy theory land. <laughs> well, I agree with her general sentiment, okay. <laughs> that, you know, look for trouble and you'll find the doc. So if you want to find the doc, just literally just look for trouble. He'll be there. <laughs> That's some cl clear thinking. You, you know him so well already. But if we go down in that, they'll just call us back up again. No, 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 because I love the controls of the sonic cage. I'm the only one who can control it. Unless she's got a sonic device of her own, which is very unlikely. Out of my way. Very unlikely. But not impossible. Christ, she has a sonic device of her own. <laughs> God. She's a master. I'm just saying because, you know, at the end of the finale, they cut to the, the master's fire from the funeral pier, and he, the body wasn't there anymore, and then a hand with that same red nail polish picked up his ring. So as the master just, like, immediately got back to business <laughs> and said, instead of giant death row, flying death robots, we're going to go with cute little fat babies. <laughs> Oh, I don't think so. Get him through the window! the building. God, just having a sonic off. <laughs> he tries to get him through the window. She deadlocks the building, so he can't. She, she, it also means she equipped the entire building, including all the windows with deadlocks, just in case the doctor showed up, so... <laughs> I mean, if it's not the master, she's very master-like. I give her that. <laughs> Get on the table! Hold on! Hold on! I am! 
I just, I just love their vibe, okay? They're just so... They work so comedically well together. Donna and the Doctor. <laughs> Catherine Day and David Tennant. They're just... It's just comedically. They just vibe so well. The timing of everything is just perfect. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Um, the fair response, the only response. Doctor sonicking her sonic away before she can sonic the other rope to kill them both. Thank God. <laughs> and now he's got two sonics, but, you know, he's still dangling up here, and Donna's really dangling down here, so I do agree with the entire sentiment. What the hell is going on? <laughs> oh, wait a minute! The time we found out who he is. What's going on? Are you journalists? Stop making up! Get off! I've got you! It's always like this for you, isn't it? Oh, yes! Yeah. Off we go! <laughs> You like it, don't you? It's always like this with him, but yes, you do like it. <laughs> a good call on the cut, because I, I don't even want to imagine the physics they're involved with. He was holding her legs, and then he dragged her in. Yeah, the cut was the right choice. <laughs> I don't, also, do you want to untie this journalist, or are we just going to leave her here to get... <laughs> Oi! Sorry. Now do yourself a favour, get out. Best your advice you're ever gonna get. Okay, he, he, he's confused because yeah, he pointed an object to her and then the, the, the rope was broke. Um, and all, everything else going on. These fat monsters. You, best advice, just get out. Nice to meet you. I'm the doctor. I'm Donna. Partners in crime. Off world of sonic technology. Sonic pen. If you were to sign your real name. Matron Cofidia. Nursery flea. A wet nurse. Humans as surrogates. Okay. <laughs> Not the master then. <laughs> Waiting for a different woman with red nail polish. We're going to be waiting a while, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, using her, uh, using humans as surrogates for these fat babies to make your fat baby army for something. Maybe you want to conglomerate them all together to have, you know, instead of little cute fat babies, the Godzilla of fat. I'd oppose you foster a new generation. A breeding planet was lost. How'd you lose a planet? Like an out-of-space super nanny. Yes, Stacey Campbell, there was nothing left of her. In a crisis, you convert bone and hair and turn of organ. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Because Stacy literally did have nothing less. So yeah, the animals just took everything. I mean, <laughs> galactic super nanny is best put by Donna Day. Yeah, coming to Earth to foster a new generation of children for this off land. God knows what happens to their planet. How do you lose a planet? It, it feels like throwaway line that's going to matter more later, or I'm focusing on it way too much. <laughs> like when Donna got that compensation from the. Jadoon in episode one last season. I was waiting all this season like, oh, this is going to come back up. And it never did. <laughs> if you don't call this off, I'll have to stop you. I hardly think you can... Do you know what happens if you hold two sonic devices against each other? No. Nor me. Let's find out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolute ear murder <laughs> happens, apparently. <laughs> oh, you, make sure I would listen to the Doctor, okay? That was the one morning. You don't want to see what happens to the people who gives this who do you know don't listen to the one warning, okay? I'd say ask the family of bloods, but they're imprisoned for all time and scattered across I mean the universe and beyond, so you know <laughs> leave. <laughs> My plans in the birth plan. We're going into premature labour. Cellular falsification. Tire up. Oh, you're kidding me. That's on you, Penny. Okay, that's on you at this stage. The doctor told you to leave and you stood to look at more documents. If you had just run, you could have got out of here. They were having a talk for God knows how long. That's on you. I can't even feel sorry for you at this point, honestly. That's one solution, hiding in a cupboard. I like it. I can use this thing all day because the matron's got a computer call. And now I've got this. I can get into it. I had planned to see millions. First one million humans will have to do. Yeah, I mean, emergency. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor's here. We need to get the hell out of here because we're breaking the galactic laws. And so just take what we got. Activate this. So instead of lo everyone losing a pound of fat every night for your to build this foster children up, um, I mean, what happened to poor Stacy, Stephanie? Just happens to all of them, and then we take the babies and off we pop. <laughs> You look older. Thanks. Still on your own? Yeah. Well, no. I had this friend Martha. Martha Jones, she was brilliant. And I destroyed half her life. But she's fine, she's good. She's gone. Oh. Yeah. Martha was brilliant, that's how you said She was great. <laughs> she was kick ass as hell. Oh. And gone now. 
and Doctor alone, which means there is a companion spot open, Donna. <laughs> Yeah. You know. Travelling the earth is one thing, but then, you know, travelling the universe and time and space with the doctor. You know, no rules, doing what you want, going where you want, exploring where you want. Not having to listen to anyone, really. <laughs> the negative experiences are negative, I suppose, but it's part of the charm of it all. Yeah, it's just different, isn't it? it must have been mad turning down that offer. What offer? To come with you. Come with me? Oh, yes, please. Right. Inducer activated. <laughs> Doctor looks a bit caught off guard by that one. <laughs> come on, Doctor. Take it with you. You know you want to. You know you're lonely on your own. Take her with you, Doc. Your bestie. Come on. Just seems to be. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Question answered for that guy at least. Oh God. Program's tied. We got to stop this, Doc. Unless you want a million people just, you know, vanishing into little fat babies. <laughs> Come to me, children. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> There's so many of them, though. I don't know if they're actually a little bit sad when they got hit by the taxi. <laughs> oh, God, an army of them. All heading to her. All heading to the doctor. Doctor, you got it. <laughs> Might want to get a move on, mate. A million people are going to die. I can't succeed. <sighs> a nice try. Double strength. Inducer increasing. Oh, no, I should double it. I've got time. Oh, God. When even the doctor doesn't have time, you know you're in trouble. Smart from the doctor. Trying to override it, but then, yeah, she just turns it up. Yeah, you've got to go up there, honestly, talk. <laughs> I know going up there is not foolproof, because, you know, she's there. But, something. Is there anything I can do? Sorry, Donna, this is way beyond you. Tell me, what do you need? A second capture, but I've only got the one. I can't save them. <laughs> There's smiles. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Doc. It's, yeah, so I get used to working alone. But now just talk. Because she did the exact same thing and got the same stuff as you. <laughs> the power of working together and being partners in crime. Love him. I love him. <laughs> it's not. What's happened? I think the doctor still giving birth to 10,000 adipos. The is coming. Oh, God. <laughs> the nursery's here. Why is the nursery here such a intimidating line? God. I can only imagine the size of the ship to take God knows how many Adipo back to space and her. Once again, Doctor. <laughs> London really is a hub for alien activity. And it's all because the Doctor's here, you know. If he was in Kentucky, then the amount of aliens, you know, they might rival their fried chicken. That's funny. <laughs> Him constantly you know, looking for alien life and across the stars. <laughs> and then you see the spaceship going behind him. This is the most alien spaceship looking alien spaceship I think I've seen in this show. And I love the... It's meant to be like a nursery. I love the spinning nature and the lights of it. It reminds me of like a, you know, like a mobile. Like a mobile for, um, for, for babies you put above their crib, you know? Which is... I, I don't know if that's intentional, but <laughs> I like it. Instructions from that opposing first family. I am taking you home. And you will fly. You're not the one in trouble now. She is. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why, dog, but okay. They look so cute flowing. I spent so much an episode just talking about how cute they are. But they're just little babies. They're so cool. <laughs> I'm a sucker for just a cute little guy. And they're cute little guys. What's she in danger of? Is she in danger of them abandoning her? Or is she in danger of what the hell the, hell the doctor's about to do to her? Probably both. The children need me. What are you going to do then? Blow them up. They're just children. They can't know where they came from. Oh, well, that makes a change from last time. That Martha must have done you good. Ah, uh, she did, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Very different to the side of him office of last time where he, you know, just straight face flooded the spider babies to death and made their mother watch surrounded by flames. <laughs> you know, him letting the babies go. 
A big plus, you know, a big up on that one. Martha had a big effect on him, you know. Stopped him being so completely depressed and unremorseful. She fancied me. Mad Martha, that one. Blind Martha. Charity Martha. <laughs> I'm waving at fat. I'm waving at fat too, <laughs> Donna. She's such a little cutie. <laughs> Love her nicknames for Martha. <laughs> yeah, Donna is not falling for the doctor. She's not going to fancy him. Doctor realising maybe his feelings for Martha as well here. Um, but yeah. I just love the different relationships between Donna and the doctor, you know? Not a companion just falling head over heels in love with the doctor. Just vibing. Just besties. I love it. Get across to the room. Say that you can arrest me. Say no, it's a crime. So what's the one thing you want to get rid of? They're accomplished. I'm nanny. Mum and dad have got the kids now. They don't need the nanny anymore. <laughs> oh, that splatting noise. I didn't like that. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't needing them more. <laughs> didn't have to worry about the doctor's justice. You just got betrayed. They got what they wanted. They wanted. They got their kids. Because the doctor says they didn't need any anymore. I did not like that splat sound. Oh, oh. You two, you're just mad. Do you hear me? Mad. And I'm going to report you for madness. Some people just can't take it. <laughs> yeah, some people just can't take the madness and the weirdness of being around the doctor. But you can, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Still attached to the chair. Penny, you should have got down there a lot, a hell of a lot sooner, okay? <laughs> oh, Doctor just throwing the sonic pen into the trash. Not a better way to just dispose of that, maybe? That's my car! That is my destiny! And I've been ready for this. Packed ages ago, just in case. Because I thought hot weather, cold weather. <laughs> Donna packing several go bags in case the Doctor ever showed up packed in the car ready. That's so Donna, so prepared. I love you. I love you. <laughs> also, yes, Destiny, okay? You keep, you keep crossing paths all the episode before you finally met up. Destiny's the word. You're not saying much? No, it's just, it's a funny old life in the TARDIS. You don't want me. I'm not saying that. But you asked me. Would you rather be on your own? No. Yeah, he's accepted that at last. <laughs> he wouldn't rather be on his own. I just think also, you know, he's seen the dangerous situations he's got Donna in already, and he actually does care about Donna a lot. And he just, you know, he doesn't want her to get hurt. The same way Rose ended up getting hurt. The same way Martha ended up getting hurt. The same way all of his companions, all the people that go with him, you know, even like Jack and that and the one-offs, end up getting hurt. He doesn't want that for Donna. The last time with Martha, like I said, it, it got complicated. And that was all my fault. I just want a mate. You just want two mates. I just want a mate. You're not mating with me, sunshine. <laughs> I loved him so much. <laughs> No, <laughs> I just want a mate. You want a mate with me? <laughs> I just, I just love him so much. A mate. Well, just as well, because I'm not a mate. That's not true. You're just a long streak of nothing. There we are, then. I can come. Of course you can. <gasps> Corky, I want my words, Corky. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Doctor doesn't want feelings, you know, love getting in the way. Not that kind of love, you know. But platonic love, sure. He just wants a mate, and yeah, Donna's only interested in her friends. You're not her type, Donna. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Okay, I'm ready for just bestie vibes. Just besties having a laugh and having a good time with the TARDIS. This is what I want. Gotta go. I'm gonna stay with Vina for a bit. I've still got the car keys. There's a bin on Brook Street. Living in there. What? A bin? Gotta go. Really gotta go. Bye. Donna, you can't go. Bye. Donna, you can't. 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 Bye. Donna, I don't know where else we're going to catch them, but still. <laughs> There's this woman, tall blonde woman called Sylvia. Tell her that been there. I beg your effing pardon? What? Huh? I've never been so confused in my life. What are you doing here? <laughs> Or, well, at the very least, what is your face doing here? Okay, okay. <laughs> so, not in body, at the very least, Rose, but seemingly she's found a way to, I don't know what the word is, phase? You know, much like how the Doctor phased to her Earth to say goodbye to her in Doomsday. Found a way to phase across hoping to at least see the doctor because you know this place this incident screamed doctor <laughs> all the aliens 
just missed them though, Rose. Oh, God. <laughs> Whole wide universe. Where do you want to go? Two and a half miles that way. Oh, I'm smiling so much. <laughs> That's so lovely, yeah. Donna, obviously she wanted to say goodbye to her granddad as well. I wanted him to see it after she mentioned it earlier. Get a wave goodbye. Him going to see the Doctor as well, who he recognises from the Christmas special, most likely. Oh. <laughs> That's it! That's it! That's it! That's it! He's doing a little jig. <laughs> so happy for it. Yeah, I'm going to explore space and the stars. Just like he wanted to <laughs> and wants to. And him knowing how she was waiting for it as well, waiting for the TARDIS specifically, and the Doctor and how he's met the Doctor. It all fits so well. <laughs> I love it. That was a really good premiere. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'm excited. I'm very excited for the Doctor and Martha's adventures. I love their dynamic. Just no relationship feelings or love or whatever in that regard just bestie vibes having fun and having a laugh in the tide especially because comedically Catherine tate david tennant they just gel so well and it's so easy and also i need to know what the hell is going on with rose so i can't wait to find out more about that but that is going to be it for today next time we return straight up with episode two martha's first adventure as a full-time companion in the tardis and it's called the fires of pompeii so i'm gonna take a wild guess where we're going but that's next time and that's it for today let me know your thoughts and comments down below as always want to hear what you think thank you for the support on the series as a whole it's been really appreciated it's been amazing and leave a like if you enjoyed i hope you have and subscribe for more so you don't miss a thing as we continue on in david Tennant's final season as the 10th doctor at least in doctor who in the tardis uh but yeah like subscribe thoughts in the comments down below and as always i'm so very special Thank you for watching.